Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and in this video I'm going to look at this printer, the Epson ET2850, in terms of media choices for getting the best results out of it. That's for photos, art prints, cards. It can do all of them, but because of the limited number of inks in it, it's quite specific as to what you need to use to get the best results. You may even decide that as a result of this, four inks is not enough or you need more inks. Um, I'm going to be looking at the Epson 8500 as well after this, and that has more inks and I'm expecting it to be much more widely useful if you want to print on a wide range of media. So what am I, what's the problem with this one? Well, it's not a problem really, because it's a printer aimed for home use. It's aimed at document printing. So it has a pigment black. It prints on plain paper very well. It, it has a scanner. You can feed quite a pile of uh, paper in the back of it. Um, it doesn't have feed trays and it's quite a basic printer, but it's an ink tank printer, which a lot of people like because the inks are a lot cheaper than filling up with cartridges. Now, this is aimed at a very specific market, but I wanted to see whether you could actually get decent quality pictures out of it. Um, could I use it for, you know, somebody's holiday snaps? Could I say, yeah, by all means, you know, print them on some small paper and that and you'll, you, they'll be fine. Um, the results are in general, maybe, but it depends on how much you're interested in, in actual print quality. Now I've got some stuff. I have been making lots of profiles for different papers for this and that's what all these piles of papers are here. I've got some other stuff on profiling but typically I print off some charts like this and I read them and I create profiles. Now the profiles tell you quite a lot about the inks and in this we've got a black, yeah, we've got a cyan, magenta and a yellow. Now the cyan, magenta and yellow inks are dye inks, the blacks are pigment. That means that if you are printing on a photo paper media setting, remember the media settings are what you set in the driver, they're nothing to do with the profiles or anything, they are the, the settings for the media, they're also what you set on the front, on the little display on here, on the front here. The media settings, if you use something like premium glossy, semi-gloss, any of the gloss photo papers, it turns out they only print using the three dye inks. How do I know that? Well, lots of test prints and things was, was part of doing it. But one of the things when I look at uh, printing on, let's take an example here. This is an Epson paper I'm tracking. This is Epson Premium Luster. Now, this particular print as my test image. It doesn't may, in fact on the video it may look quite reasonable, but it's got blocked up shadows. Um, the colour, it's not quite right. The, the black and white is relatively neutral, um, but I've put a lot of effort into making profiles. Now when I've written the review on this, all the profiles I've made will be available for experimenting for non-commercial use if anyone wants to try them. But with this picture, it's, it's the sort of print that I would expect off any old inkjet printer in the past when I just asked it to print a photo without doing anything special. The colours aren't wrong, but it's not terribly good. However, when I tried doing the same thing on a matte paper, and this one is, this one's a permajet paper, and this one is their matte 240. Now you'll find there are a lot of smooth matte papers around the 240 gram mark. That should hint that there aren't many people making it. Uh, so you will find a papers of this sort. Um, this is very similar to Epson matte. So I used the media setting for this. I used the matte paper setting for this one. I profiled it, produced the profile, and I produced this image. Now, it's on uh, a matte paper, which means it has a matte look. So it doesn't have quite the intensity of the colors. However, when you look at the blacks, the blacks are far better on this. Um, the blacks are more neutral. The blacks are not crunched up. So grays and you know deep shadow and other things like that are not scrunched together as I'm seeing on this particular shot here. What's causing this marked difference because most printers I test, um, they work great on glossy papers, they work great on 
um, this, whether they're dye or pigment based, it's because of the mix. And what's happening here is actually, I can see what's happening when I look at, uh, this is from the profiling application I was using. Now I've got some videos on details of profiling, so I won't go into it. But the key to notice is that I'm looking at the measurements for the black patch on this, and that's this one in the corner here. Uh, that's meant to be as black as the printer can manage. And what I see is a spectral graph here. Now the graph has bumps in it. Now ideally for a black, it should be a straight line. That is indicative of dye inks. And I'm, I'm looking at this when I'm doing the testing, thinking this is not quite right. There's something wrong here. I'm not seeing a good black. So the black is not as dense in the red. It's also not as dense in parts of the blue. That's going to give distinct coloration to the blacks. And the blacks are not looking at the actual numbers on it. They're not particularly dense either. So what's what else when I look at a different paper? This is the same test chart, one of these test charts here, but done for the Epson, uh, for the Epson matte setting, but on the Permajet matte 240. So it's a, a basic so smooth matte, bright matte white paper. And in this, I see an absolute solid dead straight line, no bumps whatsoever in it. I can also tell from the numbers that the black on this, the D-max of it is considerably darker than it is on the glossy print. Now that's the wrong way around. You don't normally see that. So what does this tell me what's happening? Now, I'm going through all of this stuff so that it explains the results I get when I'm trying different papers and when I'm printing cards and things later. So um, yeah, I'll keep the technical away from this as much as possible. But in essence, when you are using the matte paper setting, all four inks are being used. When you use the, any of the photo settings, only the dye inks, that's the magenta, cyan, and yellow. And that is never gonna give the best of results. So it means that it explains perfectly well why these pictures, why these prints don't look so great. Now, you might think, oh, does that mean I can't print photos? Well, not quite, because in experimenting, I tried doing some profiling of a, um, of a luster paper, but I used the matte setting, the matte uh, media setting in this. That means all four inks are being used. Lo and behold, I actually get a much, much better looking print. Now I'm using the matte media setting on a luster paper. This is Epson Premium Luster and if I don't get any light reflecting off the print, then it looks absolutely superb. However, get some light hitting at a shallow angle and the matte black ink is nowhere near as dark as the dye inks. So it shows up, all the shadows on this show up as a slight gloss differential. Uh, there's no bronzing, so there's no color or anything. So if I'm looking at this and it's illuminated flat and there's no reflections off it, then it looks great. However, the moment you look at it at a slight angle, you can see where the blacks are. So what we've got, this is a print on Premium Luster, but using the matte setting. So all four inks are using, you're being used. And this is one using the supposedly correct luster setting. Doesn't look so good. In fact, it means that in terms of uh, shiny papers, um, I, I, any paper that you'd profile using a gloss type setting, um, it really is hit and miss as to what sort of results you're gonna get if you are looking for high quality photo printing. Now, I have to say that there's an awful lot of people you could show a picture printed on either of these, if I printed them on say six before, seven five, something like that, as photo snaps from my phone or something like that a large number of people would not notice the difference. However, once you've seen the difference, and I spot it because I test printers all the time, I've got lots of printers to test over the years, um, it goes, oh, that's wrong. It's not good. Does that mean the printer is useless? Far from it. It means that if I'm looking for printing 
printing out glossy photo prints, then a different printer to this may be in order. If I want the occasional glossy photo print, but actually I mainly want it for an office printer, printing documents, copying, doing things like that, then this actually may be a better choice because of the cheap inks, because it's the ink tank settings. Okay, well that's glossy. What about matte papers? Here, the prints produced on matte papers look really good. Uh, because the ink, the uh, matte ink, the black ink there, works perfectly well with these papers. So I've got that. That's on 240 gram paper. That's uh, quite thin. Uh, I've printed also some cards. And I've looked at, at cards. I've got quite a few different sorts here. Uh, this is a photo speed one, um, media. And uh, this is on Platinum Etching 285. So it's a classic sort of fine art paper, sort of thing you might use for cards. That's uh, Ely Cathedral, by the way. So I've printed that, and that's using one of my profiles, and it works really well. Um, so that's fine. You'll notice this is folded. This is, this is an A4 sheet. That prints borderless. If you want to print cards and things with any printer, check carefully the specifications as to which paper sizes are supported as borderless and which is not. The default borders, and this is on a, uh, let's have a look, this is a different one here. This is a 300 gram, still quite thick, but thin. This is a matte uh, paper. This is like a heavier version of that 240 gram one I don't. This is a pinnacle matte, uh, these postcards, uh, printed once again using the matte settings, using one of my profiles for it. Comes out very nice. Note though at this size, and this is A6, I've got an enforced 2.5 millimeter or so border on the picture. Now, if you want to print borderless, check very carefully. Only some paper sizes will print borderless. So this one, because it's A4, folded down. Likewise, this particular one here, and this one is on photo speed, and it's matte ultra 240. It's matte, it's that 240 gram again. It's likely the same coating as some of the others I've looked at. But this is a photo speed photo cards. They are five inch by five inch. Now for this one, the paper size, I need to set a custom paper size. Now I'll have some more details of this when I do the written review and I'll have some actual details of measurements and things like that. But this at five by five, that's not a standard paper size for this. And I've set a five millimeter margin for that particular one. That paper though, that's, perhaps a little thin for a card. I don't know, depends what you want. Uh, likewise, this particular one here, here's the Etching 285 again. That's more of an art paper, slight texture to it. Also prints very well with this. How do the papers feed through it? Well, remember that grams weight does not equate with thickness. Some papers are denser than others. So you can have a 300 gram paper, which is very dense, which is quite thin. You can have a 300 gram paper, which is not very dense, so it's quite thick. What will this printer take? Well, the 240 gram ones, they're all quite thin. In fact, even the 300 gram version of the plain matte paper, that works very well. Here is print, and a borderless print at that, done on A4. This is on watercolour paper. Now this is a Permajet paper, this Permajet Artist Watercolour 250. Um, I think you can find one similar ones to this. It's very heavily textured. Um, it's a, a matte art paper. It says 250 grams. It's really quite thick because it's not a very dense paper. Now this in the rear feeder here doesn't feed well. It will draw in and then you'll get a paper error. However, you just put your finger on top of it and just push it slightly and it'll get drawn through the printer and it will print perfectly well. This is about the limit of what this printer will take. Uh, you certainly couldn't stack pictures of these. So they've gone in through the back there. That one, that's a view in Oregon, taken one of the flat bits of Oregon when I was driving across it. Um, for that sort of imagery, this works a treat. So if you're looking to print art prints on matte papers. The real thing to look for is what the thickness is and also whether your paper size is supported. Now, if I use one of these uh, papers like this, and this is the, I'll say once again, this is the matte 300 postcard. 
so it's the thicker version of the 240, quite thin, feeds perfectly well. I was able to stack a pile of them in the back and they go through. If you're thinking of using a printer like this for your print business and selling cards, one little thing to remember, yes, I can stack them, they go through, but this prints really quite slowly. This is not a fast printer at the higher quality settings. Use it for office printing and stuff like that, and it will just chuck the pages out with plain paper. It whizzes through stuff. Look to printing higher quality stuff. Yes, it can do it on the matte papers, so it does that, but you'll be waiting a minute or two for each print, certainly for the larger ones. Um, so you've got to think about that if you're going to be doing much. So I've got several examples. I say that's, that's the Mat Ultra 240, the etching. Little thing I noticed on the etching here, and it's almost gone now, I can almost see it. There are very slight indications of roller marks on the back. Just a slight indentation. It looks like this is a softer surface paper. It's also slightly thicker than this matte paper. This looks to be on about the limit of taking marks. Incidentally, I, I, this is a thicker paper still. It doesn't have a single mark on it. So it's all about the actual surface texture, how the paper's built itself. So you may find some papers mark easier than others. And with any printer, if a paper doesn't work with a printer, Accept that it doesn't work with that printer. Doesn't matter how many people have told you it's a great paper. If it does not work with your printer, it does not work with your printer. And messing around with print settings and doing stuff will just waste more ink and paper. Obviously, wasting ink is not quite such a problem on this because of the big ink tanks, but you need to look at it carefully as to what you're going to do. Just one other little bit. I'll, I'll, f I'll finish off on something here. Um, and I'll just show on this particular computer here. This is when I was printing the test image. And this, this test image is available on the Northlight Images website. It's my standard one I use for testing printers. There's also some text about what all these different panels mean and what they show you. That, using the Photoshop print driver, or you know, a print, is showing me the gamut of the, any gamut warnings. Is any of the print out of gamut? Nothing. That's great. That's a matte paper. Interestingly, this is the version, and red shows out of gamut areas. That is the version that's printed on the gloss paper. Loads of areas, and they're all the really dark bits, are out of gamut. Um, you may, if you're printing on photo papers, you may need to decide whether you're going to use relative colorimetric with black point correction or uh, perceptual rendering intent. The rendering intent makes a difference on this. And I found that for quite a few of these, I used the perceptual rendering intent because the images look better. Now, that doesn't, it's not universal, so it's something you need to test, but it really shows the difference. And final bit on that, on this, this is the um, sort of gamut volume. Um, I'll show these, the, normally these, these little diagrams I, I just show for, you know, just because they look good. But this one shows the relative gamuts of same paper, one using the matte setting, one using the premium luster, or I think it was premium semi-gloss setting. Uh, the gamut volume of the one that's using all four inks is massively bigger. Uh, and that graph, and it's like, normally there's very little difference between these things, but that display on its own, that tells me that printing out on glossy papers is hit and miss, and compared to many a printer I've used, Epson and Canon is pretty poor. And that's why you have four inks. Four inks is the difference between three inks and four inks in this. Um, yeah, if you want to print on this, this is a paper, as I say, if you want to print on matte papers, cards on matte papers, maybe with borders, maybe not, depending on the paper size. If you want to do that, then this printer will work great. But if you're looking for nice photo prints, um, glossy photo prints, colourful prints, well, colourful, yes, with the matte, but glossy, no. Um, it just doesn't work on three inks particularly well. Um, so... There you have um, that printer. I don't have a problem with it because it is not pitched as a photo printer. If you want to use it for photo printing, by all means, use it for photo printing. You get what you get. If you're concerned about quality, I would immediately 
go past this one and go to something, if I wanted A4, go to the ET8500, which has got lots of inks. It's identical from a profiling point of view to the ET8550, the A3 version that I tested. And I know from that makes really nice looking prints. So it depends, you know, what do you actually want? But anyway, that's just a bit about it. I'll have lots about this when I do the full written review and the actual overall printer review. Um, the written reviews always have all the technical details in them uh, because I can't just fill up videos with just tables full of numbers and things. I can put those in appendices in written reviews and it's much easier to do. If you have any questions about this printer, pre please do let me know. I've got it here for a while. Um, I have got lots of media I've tested on it and things, but if you've got specific questions about this one, let me know. And um, it does, people's questions are what gives me inspiration for these little short videos. So they're always appreciated. I hope this has been of use. Hope it hasn't been too technical, put too many people off, but it just goes to show the importance of media i.e. paper type and media settings selections when you're doing printing. So there it is. And uh, thanks for watching. Oh, please do subscribe to the channel as well and tell other people about it. It is much appreciated. Thank you.